cable news show, 11 years and counting. The O'Reilly Factor. Thanks, Stan Wittes. I'm Bill O'Reilly in the Culture Warrior segment tonight. There was deep anger on the left over the Donald Trump birther issue and other attacks on President Obama's background. Almost immediately, defenders of President Obama labeled the whole thing racist. This is what the Republican Party stands for, though. Racism. I think Donald Trump is a racist. He said, we need to look at his grades and see if he, he was a good enough student to get into Harvard Law School. That's just code for saying he got into law school because he's black. Uh, this is a, an ugly strain of racism that's running through this whole thing. It's very racist because, in other words, you say you can't, he couldn't get into Harvard on his own, he didn't write his book, he can't fathom that a black man could be that smart. That's what's behind this. Uh, uh, being black, when you say, you know, this is racist, 9,000 people say, oh, no, you're just playing the race card. Well, you know, I'm playing the damn card now. We've known for years that Donald Trump was a bully and a fool, mm -hmm. but we've only recently learned that he's also a, a racist. I said over a year ago that this was going to be, this presidential race, Lawrence, was going to be the ugliest, the nastiest, the most divisive, and the most racist uh, the most racist in the history of this uh, republic. You're now to analyze the culture warriors, Alicia Menendez in Washington. She's in for Gretchen Carlson. And here in the studio, Margaret Hoover. So, you heard that. You put together a fabulous montage of the most predictable answer possible from the entire left. But let me tell you, we could have gone five minutes with it. I, that, that's exactly why I say right. it's so unbelievably predictable. This is a reflex of the left. Whenever anything goes wrong, it's absolutely in a, like at all related to race. They play the race card. They say you're outright racist. Here's the reality. We are so far from that point in our history in the 1960s, past Martin Luther King Jr., past the civil rights movement, past the really ugly, evil racism of the Bull Connor era. That is not the America we live in today. So you don't believe there's any validity on any of those people? However, I do think that when Donald Trump says, this guy, how'd he get into Harvard anyway? And he's, he's hinting towards affirmative action, and when there's a widespread movement to delegitimize the president to say he's not American enough, I think it's not unrelated well, there's a difference to between, race. There's a difference I think between, it's not wait, unrelated wait, wait, to race. Wait, wait, wait. It's the difference between raising questions about how he advanced in his academic life and uh, calling him out on his skin color. I think there's a difference I think there. there. I think there's a difference, but I think it's a subtle one. And I think it does hint at, a, yeah. at, at affirmative action, which is a racial issue. Well, if it is affirmative action, so what? That we have affirmative action but, in but this country. But is he then stoking some sort of in discomfort that people have with his skin color? That's the question. I, I mean, no, I've known Trump for 25 years. I don't think he I stokes think anything. He just says it flat out. All right, how do you see it, Alicia? Well, I got to say, I agree with Margaret Hoover. I think that analysis is dead on. And I think this is the problem. There are big conversations we need to be having about the fact that there are still many racial tensions and anxieties in this country. Well, well, let and me when stop you start you there. calling people racist. Let, let me stop you yeah, there. Go ahead. I, I, I don't see all of these racial confrontations in the country, and I do this every day. What I see is uh, Barack Obama elected president with 43% of the white vote. Um, he got something like 67% of the Hispanic vote. I don't see it. And, and unless you can show it to me, Alicia. But I'm not saying it's just about Barack Obama. I'm saying it's generally about people but, but trying it, it, to figure it, it, out look, what to do look, with this change in you America. Heard, you heard those sound bites from those people. Do you mm -hmm. think those sound bites have any validity? I think, as Margaret said, that there is some intertwining here, but I think that those comments, which sound very radical, obscure the conversation that we well, actually they may need obscure to be having. It, but I think there's another, look, wouldn't you both agree that calling somebody a racist, anybody, without proof beyond a reasonable doubt, is a vicious, hateful thing to do? Would you agree? Yes. As vicious okay. as Would suggesting agree, that the uh, president Alicia? of the United States is not a real American. No, no, no. Yes. Would Different. you answer, answer my question, Alicia? Calling somebody a racist without proof beyond a reasonable doubt, a vicious, hateful thing, yes or no? I agree. Okay. I agree, agree but I think agree, that right? part of the reason okay. you see so that now we have now we have a cadre of people on national television doing a vicious, hateful thing. Yet, but Bill, they're doing it in response to what was a vicious no. and hateful thing coming out of the right. And there were very few in people like look, you who were one, being honest you don't, you don't, and calling You don't it commit bad behavior and point to other bad behavior. And what came out of the right, that's true, Alicia, but, write, write it down. Don't justify bad behavior by pointing to other. Wait a minute. 
And the second thing is what came out of the right and was absolutely blown apart on this broadcast was the birth certificate mm -hmm. might be phony. Yep. I didn't think that it had any racial overtone at all. It was a birth certificate. So you deal. think it's you think it's just coincidental that the first president to have this type of public questioning of his land of origin of being a real American happens to be our first black president. That's Look, just a weird coincidence. It, it's a, it's born out of hatred for the man. They'll get the people who hate Barack Obama will latch on to anything. I agree. And, and you don't believe that a small of fraction color. of them no, and a small it's fraction because, because just of his a tiny policies. Bit. I, I don't think that, and I think when you look at polling that's been done on this, it bears out that there are a lot of people who have anxiety I don't, around the I fact don't think it's a hate that, black that he is thing. different. And I think. All right. well, Let me give Margaret the last word. Go. Look, I, look I, these people who are calling everybody uh, racist, racism, you're right. It, it's, it, it's an unflattering and a, and a decisive, hateful, divisive, not and a hateful, hateful. It is a hateful thing to say, and I agree with you. But Alicia's right. Politics follows the lines of physics. Every reaction creates an equal and opposite reaction. And what's happened here is the left has reacted. To, the, the far left has reacted to something very, very ugly from the far right. Okay, but they can react. And there are reasonable they can people like in us a, in the middle. They can react in a responsible way, as we did. We just took it apart. All right, ladies. Thanks very much. We appreciate it.